And breaking news right now on Sunrise, a violent night in Minneapolis. Two people are dead after two shootings. Another is in the hospital. We've been following the story all night long, and Jen will be live in just a few minutes here. Hopefully for, she'll have a, an update for us for sure. Yeah, for, let's welcome you in here. It is 6 o'clock on your Thursday morning. Jason and Alicia here with you on this morning. Yeah, hopefully folks uh, layer up. Didn't put away the big winter coat because, <laughs> guy, winter is back today for a short short while. Just a little, yeah, a little period of time here today and then again tomorrow morning. Notice I said tomorrow morning, not tomorrow all day. We'll be warming up tomorrow afternoon and through the weekend. So we do have a nice little warm up on the way. But first, temperatures this morning are in the teens. And look at that. The feel like it feels like zero. So it is kind of a chilly start. Winds are out of the north, adding to that wind chill. And we'll warm up to around 15 by 11 this morning. A few areas with clouds due to a winter system off to the south, especially in northern Iowa, southern Wisconsin. So uh, if you're looking to the south skies, you're going to notice some more cloud cover, but still maintaining peaks of sun, especially for the uh, early hours. Later this afternoon, we'll see most of our sunshine, 21 for your afternoon high, and you'll see sunrise time uh, right around 712. Thank you guys. 601 as you're getting ready to head out. Here's a look at the map again. Still green around the 694 494 loop and beyond between Minneapolis and St. Paul and that stretch of 94 just eight minutes in both directions and a live look in the East Metro 94 at 7th Street where traffic is slowly starting to pick back up. Let's get back to our breaking news here. Two people are dead. Another hurt after shootings in Minneapolis. Yeah, we have new information from police police just within the last couple of hours. There are apparently two shooting scenes that happen east of Lake of the Isles. Police found the victims a block apart. One scene is off of Colfax, the other off of Bryant. Jennifer Austin is live at police headquarters with what we know this morning. Good morning, Jen. Yeah, Alicia, you mentioned these scenes are a block apart, but police responded to them also five minutes apart. And that is why this morning they're investigating to see whether they are related. They could not confirm that that was the case last time we checked with them, uh, but certainly something they're looking into this morning to do the proximity and the timing of finding these victims. We want to show you some video of the first scene now. 1135 last night is when police responded to this Colfax and 29th Street. Minneapolis police said it was there that they found a man and a woman inside a vehicle. Both were shot at least once. The woman, the woman was taken to HCMC with injuries, which we are told are life threatening. Now the man died at the scene and a police spokesperson said officers found a gun on him. The second scene of the night, as we said, uh, or excuse me, it was in this apartment building and that is where officers found another man shot. They said he also died at the scene. We have two individuals whose lives were lost tonight and uh, certainly we don't know um, what led up to this or all of the, uh, the motives that are involved. That's all part of the investigation. But anytime anyone loses their life, it is, is a tragedy. So we're told no arrests so far, but police really want anyone who has information, especially video, because there are a lot of apartments around both these scenes. They're thinking maybe they had some video cameras. If you have video uh, or anything that you could that could maybe help police, they want you to call Crime Stoppers. All right, Jen, thanks for that report outside of uh, Minneapolis headquarters. Thank you. Now to a developing story we're following out of St. Paul. Three teens are waking up in jail this morning after they allegedly took part in a shooting and a high speed chase. That chase ended when a Jeep crashed into a St. Paul bar and restaurant. CC's in Lower Town with new information. We're here at Oxcar Tail House, the restaurant that was involved in the crash that you've just mentioned. And as you can see here, the crash left the restaurant in pretty bad shape. I mean, multiple entrances are boarded up. As you can see there, car parts are still scattered. There's glass on the ground. If we go around to the corner here, we can also see that police tape is still up. Now, St. Paul Fire says the building is safe, but the inside will need a lot of fixing. So this is where yesterday's chaos ended, but we want to show you where it started. St. Paul police officers were called to East St. Paul just before 4.30 p.m. yesterday. There was a report about two vehicles shooting at each other. Officers saw a black Jeep with a broken rear window near Minnehaha Avenue that they believed was one of the vehicles involved. They tried to do a traffic stop, but the Jeep sped away. And that's when the high speed chase started. Police telling us the Jeep reached speeds of 90 miles per hour. Eventually, the Jeep hit a car here at Wall and 6th Streets before slamming into the Oxcart Ale House. Now, police tell us the Jeep in this crash was stolen from St. Paul. Amazingly, though, police say no one was hurt. Jason, Alicia. 
CC, thank you. A teenager accused of terrorizing Minneapolis during a crime spree in 2021 now faces charges as an adult. Here's the latest on the case. Good morning, I'm Danny Spiewak. 18-year-old Jabron Giles is now being charged as an adult for what prosecutors are calling a major crime spree that occurred in the city of Minneapolis back in the fall of 2021. Prosecutors allege that Giles, who was then 16, was involved in several armed robberies around the city, including the robbery of a bookstore, even a skincare business. He had been held in the juvenile detention center since the fall of 2021, but now that he's being charged as an adult, he is being held on $1 million bond at the adult detention center in Hennepin County. 605 now to El Paso, Texas this morning, the scene of yet another deadly shooting spree. The police say one person was killed and three others hurt after someone started shooting inside of a mall. This all happened around five o'clock yesterday evening at the food court. The three people hurt are still in critical condition this morning. Police do have two suspects in custody. Now, last night's tragedy happened just feet away from where 23 people were shot and killed by a gunman inside a Walmart in 2019. In fact, the suspect in that shooting just pled guilty to federal hate crime charges last week. In just a few hours, Jalissa Thaller is facing sentencing for the May 2022 murder of her son. Last week, a jury found Thaller guilty of killing her six-year-old son, Eli Hart. She will automatically get life in prison without parole for a premeditated murder conviction the jury handed down. Loved ones will have the opportunity to read victim impact statements during today's sentencing. White Bear Lake is coming together for an officer who was shot in the line of duty. Two McDonald's in the city donated a portion of their sales last, last night to Officer Ryan Sheik. He was shot three times while trying to make an arrest last month. The fundraiser went through the dinner rush and the restaurant owner, Terry McBride, says he wanted to get the community involved in the officer's recovery. Well, I just felt we need to do this. It's, uh, people have run fundraisers before, but we thought that um, we get the locals involved in White Bear Lake and Ryan Sheik is a, a good person and he's our first responder. We thought that that would be a nice thing to do. The man accused of shooting Officer Sheik is charged with attempted murder and assault. White Bear Lake police say Sheik is out of the hospital but has a lot of recovering to do. Hastings School District food service workers say they are still fighting for better pay. The workers have been on strike for more than a week and held a rally yesterday. In addition to higher pay, they're calling for more stable hours and health insurance benefits. Earlier this week, Hastings Public Schools presented what they call a best and final offer. It includes pay increases, retention payments, and adjustment to health insurance. In St. Paul, the House Education Finance Committee is considering the largest school aid increase in history. Here's the breakdown. I'm John Croman. With a $17 billion surplus and a governor who's a teacher, schools can expect to get more state aid out of the legislature this year. The question is, how much? Well, Matt Norris, a freshman Democrat from Blaine, answered that in dramatic fashion. He wants a 5% boost next year, which would cost a billion dollars, plus another 5% the year after that for $1.7 billion. That's even more than the governor's asking for. The governor wants 4% in year one and 2% in year two.